everyone, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Even on those days when I might not be feeling as perky or as happy as I want to be, I still have a lot to be thankful for and to be grateful for. Today, we are crafting gratitude. Stay tuned. channel, I am so glad that you decided to stop by and welcome to all of my new friends and to all of my new subscribers. Welcome back to all of my longtime friends and longtime subscribers. Y'all, thank you so much for the positive way in which you support me and my channel. That's what my channel is all about, positivity. So for those of you who are bringing the uplifting and the positivity in my comments, thank you so very much. I really do appreciate it. If this is your first time stopping by my channel, I hope that after watching this video, you might consider subscribing. Even if you don't, I am so thankful that you are here with me right now. In my opener, I talked about having so much for which I am grateful and thankful, because I do. I'm not always the happy, perky Sherry that you might see on camera. I have days when I just don't feel happy. I have days when I don't feel like getting out of the bed and doing much of anything. But even on those days, I still realize how thankful and how grateful I am. And those days of not feeling happy-go-lucky are just that. I'm not comparing anything that I feel to anyone who might suffer from clinical depression. I'm just talking about those occasional days that some of us have where we might not be feeling our best. But even on those days, we're usually able to find at least one thing for which we can be grateful and thankful. So what I've created here is a 2023 gratitude journal. This is perfect as a gift. If you want to give this for Christmas, it is a perfect gift. If you want to sell these at a craft fair, this is a perfect craft fair seller. I use gratitude journals because I like to keep those things that I am grateful for at the front of my mind. Every now and then I'll just jot down something that might have brought me a moment of happiness or I might be grateful for. I might have spoken to my grandkids and had a really nice conversation with them or they might have said or done something funny that just really made me all the more thankful and appreciative that I am their Mima. So I'll write it down in my little journal or I might have been at the store and someone did a nice thing for me. I'll write that down as well or I might have done a nice thing for someone else. So a gratitude journal is just a way for me to write down things for which I'm grateful and I'm thankful. And that is what we're going to be making today. I'll give you a closer look in just a minute, but y'all know what time it is. It's time to make it. All right, y'all. So here's a closer look at today's fabulous gratitude journal. When finished, it measures four and a quarter by seven and a quarter, and it's half an inch deep. On the front, I have a cute little cut apart and a sticker. When you open it on the inside, I have a couple of pockets, and then I just added a few stickers and ephemera to the inside of mine just to give it a nice little whimsical touch. And on the inside, we have 50 pages of just regular printer or copier paper. So basically, this is a 100-page journal, front and back. So on mine, what I did, I just took a few stickers and whatnot and just added those to the pages just to give it a little bit of interest and cuteness. This isn't something that you have to do. It's just something that I decided to do to this one just on different pages. I didn't do it on every page. You can. You can actually make this junk journal style if you want, but I just thought it would be really cute to start on some 2023 gratitude journal. And so here is what you're going to need to make it. Before I go over what we're going to need to make it, I am going to have just a few kits in various patterns available. So everything that I'm showing you right here is what will be in the kit. So we have 50 sheets of pre-cut white writing paper and mine is just plain old copier or printer paper. I have it cut at four and a quarter by seven and included are two pieces of pre-taped chipboard and these chipboard pieces measure four and three eighths by seven and a quarter. Then I have a pre-taped piece of chipboard for the spine. This piece measures half an inch by seven and a quarter. Then I have a piece of decorative paper that measures nine and a half by seven and a half. I have a piece of decorative paper that measures nine by 11. Then I will have two cut aparts that are at least three by four, and then two mats that will go behind those cut aparts like this. And then I'll have six pieces of ephemera and stickers. So I want the polka dots to be my outside cover. 
So the first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to take one of my chipboard pieces that measures four and three eighths by seven and a quarter, and we're going to place it down. I think when I gave the dimensions for the book, I might have said seven and a quarter by four and a quarter. It is actually seven and a quarter by four and three eighths. So I am going to take this, place it down right there. Then I'm going to add another piece of tape to this side. And I'm going to place it right here, giving myself about an eighth of an inch in spacing. Then I'll take the second piece that measures four and three eighths by seven and a quarter, and we're going to place it down. I'm going to take this piece and we're going to place it down, giving ourselves about an eighth of an inch in spacing. And then I'll flip it over, get it nice and stuck. And then I'll take my stylus, press it against the chipboard, and drive it into the paper. And I'm creating a nice little score, which does help to minimize cracking. If you have a paper that is prone to cracking, it might not eliminate the cracking, but it might lessen the severity of it. So now I'm going to take it, stand it, and get the paper used to being folded over. Then I'm going to take my finger blade and we're just going to miter cut our ends. And y'all, if you think that you have miter cut on an end and your chipboard is going to be showing, go ahead and place down some glue and then take one of your corner pieces and just put it right there so that when you fold over, even if you have cut short, the chipboard won't be showing. And y'all, that little tip is not my idea. That was shared with me about three years ago from a former viewer. And she didn't want me to say her name because she said it wasn't her original idea, but she didn't know where she got it from, but she had seen it and she wanted to share it with me. So just wanna make sure that I am not given the credit for having such a brilliant idea because it's not mine. So we're going to take these pieces, fold them over, stand this up, fold it over. Then I'm just going to take my big old spatula go in and get my tape nice and stuck and there is the front of my book i really do like this pumpkin colored paper even though it's hot outside it's beginning to look a lot like fall is right around the corner so what better way than to start bringing in that pumpkin spice so now we're going to take our piece that measures nine and a half by seven and we're going to place it down because that is our liner so i am going to take my tape and i am going to place tape to cover the chipboard. And I'm going to peel away this one piece so that I can go ahead and place down one more piece and not overlap. Then I'll just get everything nice and stuck. We're going to bring in the liner piece and I'm going to go ahead and place my tape on the liner going around the edges. And I'll place tape on all four edges of the liner. So now we can peel away the tape backer from the liner as well as the actual jacket. And while I'm peeling away the tape, I just want to say something, and I don't mean it to be negative, 
If I make kits available and you're not interested in the kits, that's okay. If you find the kits too pricey, that's okay too. I'm demonstrating how to make this for free. So if you want to make it, all you have to do is follow the video. If the kits aren't for you, or you are offended by the fact that I am personally making kits available to sell, that is really something that you have to deal with internally. If you want to purchase a kit, great. If you don't, that's okay too. All right, y'all, so I'm going to place down my liner, and I had already started when I realized I wasn't recording, but I stood to place the liner on top of the chipboard. So now I'm just going to use my big old spatula. Let's get this nice and stuck. I'll go in and I'll define my spines. And so the jacket is now complete. Let's do those innards. So one of the things that I forgot to mention is that we're going to need a piece that measures seven by nine and five eighths. This piece is optional, but it will come with your kit. I just wanted to create a jacket within a jacket for the um, writing papers. So on the nine and one eighth inch side, we're going to score at four and a quarter, flip it to the opposite nine and one eighth inch side and score at four and a quarter. Then we're going to bring in our 50 sheets. So then I'm going to take my stack of papers and just get them nice and straight. I'm going to take one of my clips and now we're going to take our glue and I am just going to put some drops of glue along my paper like this. Then I'm going to take my handy dandy finger and get that glue worked in. Trying to make sure I have glue covering every part of this. Squeeze out a little bit more there. Get that glue right there. Get that glue up there. And you want to make sure that you have a nice coating of glue and if you see that you don't, just go ahead and go back and add just a little bit more. Then we're going to take that fake jacket that we created and we're going to take this and I'm going to sit it down right in the middle. Now you're going to find that you have some room on both sides of this and that's okay because if you wanted to add pockets to the inside, you will have that room on both sides to be able to do that. So I'm going to move that clip. I'm going to stand this up. And basically what I'm doing is I'm working that glue in and then I'll put it back down on my desk and I'll just keep repeating that process. So I am just working the glue in and if you see the glue coming out the ends here at the top, that's a good thing because that means that you have squeezed that glue through. And let's just keep doing this. And then we're able to take our book, add some glue, and we're going to put it in on the spine right there. And like I said, you're going to see that you have some space on both sides and that's perfect because adding a pocket to these is very simple. All you need to do is just open it and add the pockets on the interior. But here's what I'm going to do. So we're going to go ahead and take some glue and place the glue on this spine. And then we'll just join the two spines. So I am just going to sort of walk that back and slide it up just a little bit and slide it over. And again, I'm just going to stand it up, go along that spine to get that glue really worked in. I'll even use my big old spatula to make sure that glue is nice and stuck. And now we can stand it up like this and just let it dry. I would recommend letting this dry overnight if possible, but if not, if you're too anxious to start using it, at least allow it to dry for about four hours 
before you try taking these pages and separating them. They really need a chance to harden in that reptile adhesive, which is going to hold those pages in place like a dream. So while my little book is drying, I'm going to go ahead and figure out what I want on the front. And I think what I want on the front is I want this little saying that says, there's always something to be thankful for. So I am just going to add some glue to the back. I'm going to take this cut apart and place it on a mat that I have pre-cut to fit the cut apart. So really, whatever your cut apart size is, just add a quarter of an inch this way and this way for the mat that you might be cutting. So now I'm going to place some glue on this. We're going to take this and I'm going to put it right there like that. And so I am going to add two pockets and I've cut two pieces that measure four by four. I'm going to butt them together like this, so back to back. Take my finger blade and I'm just going to angle down to create a little pocket and I'm going to take these pockets and I'm going to place one right here and then I'll place one in the back. So while the book is still drying, I'm going to add glue to two parts of that pocket. We'll take the pocket, we'll put it right there. Then I'll go to the back of the book. I'm just going to open that a little bit. We'll take this one and add our glue. And I'll put this one right here. Now I'm just going to bring in my little ephemera and sticker pieces and just decide where I might want to put these. So I think I'm going to tuck one of the ephemera pieces in that pocket and I'm going to take this sticker that says have a cozy day and we're going to put it right there. And I can see that I definitely still need to let my book dry, so I'm being very gentle with it. Then I'm going to flip over to the back side, and I'm going to add this cut apart there. Then I think I'm going to take this little sticker and put it right there at the top. Then I'm going to take this little leaf here and just add it to the front as a little cute piece. And then I'm going to have one sticker left and then I'm going to take my second cut apart set and I'm going to add some glue. We'll take this piece and we're going to put it down on the mat. So this is a three by four cut apart. I cut the mat at three and a quarter by four and a quarter. So I'm going to take my glue Add some glue here, and I'm going to take this piece and we're going to put it right on the inside of our journal. And y'all, how stinking cute is this? I made mine so that I can go back and add some pockets on the inside, but if you don't want to add pockets to yours, just add some additional sheets of white paper. The kit I'm selling will come with 50 sheets, but if you want to add more, you do have some room to be able to do that, but if you want it to go in and tuck in a pocket or a folder, you also have room to be able to do that as well. So here is our second gratitude journal, and I think it's absolutely gorgeous. For me, I like to have smaller gratitude journals so that I don't have to worry about carrying around something really, really large and really, really thick. I can make three or four of these to last me for the year and I'm able to journal whatever it is I might be thinking about or whatever it is I might actually want to do. But I tend to use these just to acknowledge the things that I'm thankful for. So I am going to do a very gentle flip through because I can see that I need to allow this to dry. But I'll bend that back just a little bit 
Here's our pocket. You can tuck as much in these pockets as you want. Then when we open, we start looking at the white pages. Y'all, they need to dry, so I am not going to open this book flat, but I will open this one to show you that when they are completely dry, you can open that book and lay it flat to write like this. So eventually this one will dry and it will function just like that one. But I think that this book is just so cute. And I love the fact of being able to design and make my own notebooks and journals. So I will have a few kits available, but you don't need a kit to be able to make this. You can actually follow the video and make it yourself if you want. Or if you do want to purchase a kit, I do appreciate it because it helps to keep my channel running. I am going to bring that first one back in so that you can see what an awesome statement maker this is and what an awesome statement maker it is as a gift or as a sellable at a craft fair. So guys, I hope that you have enjoyed today's fun and awesome way to make our 2023 gratitude journals. If you have, please hit that like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, be the reason someone smiles today. Happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.